This is the lesson for 12-2, day three. What you're going to be doing today are factoring binomials that are the difference of two perfect squares. So what the heck is a perfect square? Well, these are all the perfect squares for one through 30. It's the number times itself. So when you're going to be doing your factoring and deciding what's in the parentheses, you're looking, when you're looking for the difference of two perfect squares, you're looking for these numbers. You're looking for what times what equals these numbers that are the same, right? Um, so like 11 times 11 is 121, 12 times 12 is 144, five times five is 25, eight times eight is 64, and so on and so forth. Um, we really don't see these too often in the 20s, but the ones that are one through about 15 and then maybe 20, those are ones that you see very, very often. So this is a good page to come back to. So what times what equals that same number, all right? So like seven times seven is 49. So when you're looking for the difference of two perfect squares, there's a couple things that must happen, all right? You must have A and your C term be perfect squares. So it has to be one of these circled numbers as your A term or at, and as your C term. Also, you must have a subtraction sign in the middle. If you have an adding sign in the middle, it's not the difference of two perfect squares questions. Um, so these are examples of what the difference of two squares looks like, all right? So notice that we have a really have a one in front of this X squared. This is probably the most often um, seen type of difference of two squares where you just have an X squared at the beginning. You just have to remember that there's a one in front of it. And then we have the 100. Now remember 100 is uh, the difference of two squares. It's 10 times 10 is 100. So what you're going to do is you're gonna take the square root of both A and C. One of the two factors inside the parentheses is going to be with a plus sign. One of the two factors is going to be with a minus sign. You're still doing reverse FOIL. It's just that your B term, all right, notice that your B term completely disappeared from here, all right? Your B term is actually zero, all right? Your B term is actually zero. So what times what equals negative 100? that adds up to zero, all right? Well, what times what is negative 100 is positive 10 times negative 10. Anytime that you have an X squared just all by itself out here, that's just gonna be X and X. So because we're doing what times what is negative 100, that adds up to zero, this is going to end up being a plus 10 and a minus 10. 10 times negative 10 is negative 100 but 10 plus negative 10 is zero. Take a look at this middle one. So again, this is the difference of two perfect squares. Four is a perfect square because it's two times two. 25 is a perfect square because that's five times five. So right now we're doing what times what is negative 25. That adds up to zero, but we have this four out at the beginning as an A term. What you're going to do is just take this A term put it here and here as the difference of two squares. So two X times two X. Now think about when you, when you normally did FOIL and you did your first. Two X times two X does give you four X squared. But then you're gonna take the square root of 25 as well. What times what is 25? Well, it's five and five. One of them gets a plus sign. One of them gets a minus sign. So this is the difference of two perfect squares. Notice that we have those opposites there. We have 2x plus 5, 2x minus 5. We have x plus 10, we have x minus 10. That's always going to happen when your b term is 0, when you have a subtraction sign, and a and c are perfect squares. This is sort of like a special case, if you want to say. So let's take a look at this next one, 9x squared minus 36. 9 is a perfect square, 36 is a perfect square, our B term is 0, and we have a minus sign. So this is the difference of two perfect squares. What times what is 9? Well, it's 3 and 3. So we have 3x and 3x. Then we have the 36. What times what is 36? It would be 6 and 6. 
but we make one of them plus and one of them minus. If we actually did FOIL to check our answer here, we would have 3x times 3x, which is 9x squared. Outers, we would have a negative 18x. Inners, we would have a positive 18x. That's where we get that zero term from. Negative 18 plus 18 is zero. And then we have our last six times negative six is negative 36, which is what we exactly had in our question. So you can always check your answers. I'm gonna tell you that the biggest mistake that people make here is either making both of the, num both of the uh, terms inside the parentheses plus signs or both of them minus signs. You need one plus and you need one minus. So let's take a look at a couple more here. 16x squared minus 64. 16 is a perfect square, it's four times four. 64 is a perfect square, it's eight times eight. So we're going to have four x and four x, that gives us our 16 x squared. To get our negative 64, it would be a plus eight and a minus eight. X squared minus 49. Again, there's really a one in front of that x squared because that's really one times one. 1x one times 1x one is 1x squared. So we have an x and an x. 49 is a perfect square. It's 7 times 7. So you make one of them plus and you make one of them minus. 25x squared minus 81. 25 is a perfect square. It's 5 and 5. So we have 5x and 5x. 81 is a perfect square. It is 9 and 9. So we have x. 5x plus 9 and 5x minus 9. Now, be careful. They will definitely try and trick you. Not all binomials are perfect squares. In x squared minus 18, 1 is a perfect square, but 18 is not a perfect square. So we could not do the difference of two squares here. 4x squared is a perfect square, but negative 20 is not. All right, so we could not do it here because negative 20 isn't a perfect square. Here, 25 is a perfect square, but two is not. All right, two is not a perfect square, so you could not do the difference of two squares here. In this third one, now it looks like it's the difference of two squares, but notice that you have a plus sign in the middle. So therefore, you couldn't do it. You have to have that minus sign because when you do the plus and the minus, it... Um, it cancels out to give that B term a zero. If you're thinking, well, couldn't you just do X plus eight and X plus eight? We couldn't, all right? We couldn't do that because when you do first, you get X squared, that's good. But when you do outers and you do inners, it would be a plus eight X and a plus eight X before you get your 64 at the end. Notice that we would add those together to be a plus 16 X as our B term. We want our B term to be zero. So you need to be very, very careful there. In the last part here, the square root of X to the fourth is X squared. So sometimes they'll try and trick you by putting an X to the fourth here. Well, this is still the difference of two squares. What times what is X to the fourth? It is X squared times X squared. What times what is 400? It's 20 and 20. So this would be a plus 20 and a minus 20. Here we have 25x to the fourth minus 36. Again, 25 is a perfect square. It's five and five. X to the fourth is a perfect square. It's x squared and x squared. 36 is a perfect square. It is six and six. So we have plus six and minus six. And in the last one here, 81 is a perfect square. 81 is nine and nine. X to the fourth is a perfect square. It's X squared and X squared. 100 is a perfect square. It would be 10 and 10, but we're gonna make one of them plus 10 and one of them minus 10. So again, be very, very careful. You have to have two perfect squares, all right? The number in front of the X squared or X to the fourth and your C term have to be perfect squares and it has to have a B term of zero, and it has to have a minus sign. So this is a special case. It only happens once in a while, but they do love these questions on the Regents exam.